Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the Fallout universe is populated with all sorts of disgusting, horrifying mutated creatures that could easily be mistaken as alien to anyone living today. Indeed, the fires and radiation of nuclear war, combined with the passing of over 200 years, have allowed for some real monstrosities to evolve from the Earth's original organisms. Fallout 4 allows us to face off against a number of these new, intimidating foes. But one of the new mechanics that distinguishes it from the rest of the franchise was the introduction of creature types. This essentially means that nearly every mutated being we meet, be it a Mirelurk or super mutant behemoth, will likely come with a few variants that differ in stats, scarcity, and often even appearance. This is one of the ways that Bethesda tries to keep the game feeling fresh and challenging as it steadily throws more and more powerful variants of the same creatures at the player as you level up. However, some of these alternate organisms are especially rare to come across, or otherwise boast some really interesting characteristics that warrant further exploration. So, in today's video, we'll be taking a deeper dive into five more rare and or interesting creature types you may have missed in Fallout 4. Part 3. Starting off, Rad stags are the mutated descendants of what was once America's vibrant deer population. In Fallout 4, they have a shocking level of variance. There's albino rad stags, glowing rad stags, rabid rad stags, alpha rat, you get the idea. But it's on the island of Far Harbor where the rarest, and perhaps most dangerous, can be found. The Devolved Rad Stag will begin spawning in on the island once you've reached level 40. It levels with you, and poses a very unique challenge. While it has some pretty outstanding stats for a deer, that we'll get into shortly, what will certainly catch your eye about this monstrous mammal before anything else is its custom model and texture. They glow bright green, somewhat resembling the appearance of normal glowing Rad Stags, Though, these are a good bit brighter, with what seems to be a higher quality texture, quite frankly. Easy to miss are the pair of fangs that'll be protruding from the devolved deer's head. Or, I suppose, heads. -a. From a power perspective, this is not a being to be taken lightly. With a minimum HP of 450, it'll take 4.5 times the power to bring one of these down as a normal irradiated buck. Furthermore, a base melee damage of 80 makes it 20 times more deadly than its generic store brand counterpart. To put this all into perspective, Devold variants are just slightly less powerful than Death Claws. Normal deer can easily be written off as a non threat to players of any level, really. But these, well, not so much. Oh, and they know it too, because as opposed to the vanilla creature types, which are incredibly skittish and will only engage in combat when all other options have been exhausted, these green fauna will attack as soon as they detect any opponent. So not only are they about as strong as Death Claws, they're just as aggressive too. I should point out that Devolved Stags are just one of two new deer types we can come across on Far Harbor. The other is the Erratic Rad Stag, which is much more common and has way weaker stats. Though, I'll point out that they too sport the large protruding fangs. It's as if Bethesda's implying the bucks and doe on the island evolved a bit differently than their cousins on the mainland, likely as a result of the fog. Fangs are actually a pretty common characteristic in Asian water deer, found in, well, Asia. So, I suppose it's also possible a boat shipping some zoo animals could have got stuck nearby when the bombs fell. Though, erratic rad stags are also very, very aggressive. So, I think what Bethesda's trying to imply with the fangs is that these deers have evolved to become more carnivorous. Whatever the reason for the devolved rad stag's distinct appearance and power, we may never know. Just keep your eyes peeled the next time you're wandering the forests of Far Harbor. Next, we've already brought in Death Claws up a little bit in this video. They alone pose a pretty substantial threat to players. Their raw power combined with exceptional agility makes them a major disruption at their easiest and utterly terrifying for low-level players. That said, some of their variants can be sheer nightmare fuel. 
and none is more powerful than the Mythic Deathclaw. Mythics are by far and away the rarest and most deadly of their species. Something you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at them. In fact, their model and texture doesn't differ from a normal radioactive lizard at all. Though, trust me, confusing the two can be quite the fatal mistake. As mythics spawn in with a minimum of 1360 health points. This is around two and a half times normal, as well as doing another two and a half-ish times the damage. If all that's not enough, their respectable damage slash energy resistances and the trademark Deathclaw agility we mentioned earlier makes these chameleons even more of a challenge to take down than the stats we traditionally pay attention to would suggest. They shouldn't begin populating your world until you've reached level 91 though. I frankly don't even hit that in most of my playthroughs, so unless you've been sticking with a single character for a long time, there's a reasonable chance you'll never bump into one of these. Notice how I said they shouldn't begin populating your world until level 91 though. While they're not intended to spawn in until the player has hit that milestone, some bugs in Fallout 4's coding, I know, unbelievable, bear with me, have made it possible for a single mythic Deathclaw to appear at the Deathclaw spawn point just outside of the Starlight Diner as soon as you've reached level 24. As you might imagine, this can be a big problem. One I'd frankly advise you to just run away from. I struggle downing one of these things when at my strongest in a set of full power armor with all of my perks. I can only imagine the nail-biting stress of trying to do that in a vault suit without any of those bonuses. Anyway, that's about enough for these big guys. Let's move on to something a tad smaller. Coming in at number 3, Nuka Lurks are a curious variation on the Meyer Lurks that we all know and love. Having been exposed to the questionably engineered beverage Nuka Cola Quantum for a bit too long, they've begun the process of taking on its visual characteristics. Now glowing a bright, light blue, and seeing some noteworthy behavior changes that we'll get into a moment here. Nucalurks are by definition a pretty rare creature, exclusively spawning in at the World of Refreshments attraction at the Nuka World theme park. However, that's not necessarily the whole reason I bring them up today. For one, Nucalurks are one of the few unique creature types on this list that actually appeared in a previous Fallout game. They were featured as enemies inhabiting the Nuka-Cola plant southwest of Arlington in the Capital Wasteland in Fallout 3. Incidentally, that was the location the Nuka-Cola company did most of the research and development that led to the creation of Nuka-Cola Quantum in the first place. By the way, Quantum's secret ingredient? It's Strontium-90, a radioactive isotope, which explains how it's able to be absorbed by so many organisms. Back to the Nucalurks in Fallout 4 though, their exposure to the beverage has granted them about 4 times the HP as their unnucified brethren, with 750 points of health. They also enjoy double the damage resistance, clocking an account of 150. Oh, and they have more than double the melee damage too, with 100 versus the normal 40 that we see average Mirelurks do. However, what I find to be the most fascinating statistical difference boasted by Nuka Lurks is their improved confidence. Confidence is often overlooked as a stat when assessing NPCs in the game. I wasn't aware it was even a thing until I started making Fallout 4 videos, but it's what determines how likely a character is to flee or remain committed when in combat against an aggressor. There's five levels an actor might have in the game. The higher the level, the more confident, or less likely to flee an enemy is. Normal Mirelurks are set at level 4, meaning they'll only attempt to run away in the event that it is blatantly apparent they're outmatched or doomed to lose a fight. Nuka Lurks, however, they have a maxed out confidence stat at level 5. Under no circumstances will these ever stop fighting. Either they will win their battle or die trying. Combined with their impressive HP and damage output, this can make for an especially annoying combination. 
So, the next time you find yourself in this theme park and hear a pitter-patter of crab legs on the ground, brace yourself for what's to come. For fourth spot, speaking of all things quantum, this will make sense in a second, Tank bots are a new type of enemy the Automaton DLC exposed players to for the first time. Servants of the Mechanist's automated army, they were originally created by her to assist the people of the Wasteland, alongside a plethora of other droids. However, some faulty issues in their code has caused them to do the exact opposite. You'll typically find tank bots as you navigate Automaton's dungeons, and in a few Wasteland encounters. They're pretty common, and not really noteworthy foes. Alas, only when you've reached level 75 or higher do you have the ever so small chance of crossing paths with a quantum tank bot. As you can see, these big piles of bolts are far more aesthetically intimidating than their counterparts, and for good reason. 1045 HP and 135 points worth of armor makes it easily able to stomach twice the damage as normal. But what really sets these bad boys apart are the weapons that they use. You see, regular tank bots rely exclusively upon melee attacks. Their quantum brothers aren't messing around with that kind of stuff. Instead, these make use of both a Gatling laser, capable of inflicting around 3 to 500 damage points per second on one arm, and a Tesla rifle doing 32 damage per shot on the other. And if that's not enough of a problem, quantum bots also have Assaultron heads which, aside from looking a bit scary, grant them access to that ridiculously devastating Assaultron laser beam. This combination of tools makes quantum tank bots among the more difficult enemies you may ever be unlucky enough to face, and easily the most powerful offered by the Automaton DLC. Just to gauge their strength, I decided to pit one against a super mutant behemoth, and he decimated that thing without breaking a sweat. So then, I put that same guy up against three, and the robot still prevailed with more than three-fourths of his health intact. For us, the only calming factor is the sheer scarcity of these beings. As mentioned, it's impossible to meet one before reaching level 75, and even then, they remain ridiculously unlikely to spawn. If you do happen to find one blocking your path, though, I'd recommend trying to evade these guys with stealth. Or, you know, just running away in terror. And finally, last on our list, we have the Venomous Angler. Statistically the strongest being on this list, Venomous Anglers are no joke. I mean, their average cousins aren't anything to laugh at either, being about as strong and fast as, well, you guessed it, a Deathclaw. But these puppies, or fishies, are far more intimidating, with a base health of 1,750. That's nearly twice as much as a super mutant behemoth. Furthermore, as far as this video goes, the Venomous Angler is second only to the Nuka Lurk in terms of damage resistance, with 125 points worth of it. So not only does it have much more health, but your attacks are going to be fundamentally weaker against this thing too. Their melee damage clocks in at about 175, on par with those mythic death claws we mentioned earlier, with of course even more health. Something else I've yet to mention is that anglers have a unique ability to shoot projectiles from their mouths at enemies, only making them a bigger problem to deal with. As mentioned, they're about as fast and move in a very similar fashion to death claws, but now when they chase after you, they'll also be able to fire objects. Venomous anglers do have their own custom texture to differentiate themselves from the other variants of the animal, its skin being much darker and more saturated than that of vanilla. Though honestly, when you're wandering around Far Harbor, especially at night, it's going to be almost impossible to tell the difference until you see that big red name coming at you, and typically that won't be to the absolute last minute anyway. Because, as we all know, anglers like to hide in swamps and ponds, and use their lures to attract prey, before actually revealing themselves as the beasts they are. These things combine the element of surprise with agility and incredible stats to truly be a foe that players should fear. 
they begin spawning in at level 51. Though, again, keep in mind, as with everything on this list, they level with you too. I'm just listing out the bare minimums. Though that 51 base spawn rate does mean that while they are rare, they're gonna be a good bit more common than those mythic death claws or quantum tank bots that we mentioned earlier. There's not too much more to add. Try and keep away from these things. Heck, Far Harbor also has those devolved rad stags we mentioned earlier. You know what? I think I'm good staying on the mainland for the time being. Anyway, with those words of caution, we are going to wrap up. Five more rare and interesting creature types you may have missed in Fallout 4 Part 3. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of these creatures did you personally find to be the most fascinating? Leave a comment down below, or pop by the Discord and share your thoughts. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.